first one is, in a way, a form of generative, uh, a, a form of generative in the sense that we are making synthetic tumors. I wouldn't say this is a very advanced generative model, <laughs> you know, so it's not been trained by GANs or anything like that, but it's, you know, it's a lower tech version than that, but in fact, even this lower tech version is actually quite successful. Um, and then that will be the first part, and then we'll have to say something about generative for anomaly detection. So here is some work, and this work is driven by uh, my postdoc, Zhang Wei Zhao. Uh, and here we're working first on liver, and we're dealing uh, with the issue I mentioned earlier that you don't have much annotated data. You have public data sets. You, you know, you can probably get quite a lot of normal patients who don't have any tumors in them. That's okay. Um, public data sets are small. Annotating the tumors on real data sets is difficult because you run into proprietorial issues and it takes you a lot of time. Okay. So here on Felix, 15 human years to create, etc. Um, and there are many other types of tumors uh, listed here that you'd like to be able to find. It's possible the AI algorithms that we've been developing would work, provided we have the training data, or the AI algorithms or modifications of them, modify them by putting in transformers, etc., making them more generative. But the bottleneck seems to be really the data. So the work here is going to appear in CVPR 2023. And so this was seeing what you could do in the liver if you have no annotations at all. Um, you know, you may have the boundary of the tumor, you know, boundary of the liver, although these days you can probably find that anyway because of the, the state of segmentation algorithms. And so what you do is label-free training, you make small synthetic tumors, uh, and you can vary their position, you can vary their size, you can vary their texture, etc. You put them into the, into the liver, you need to make sure that they're not sort of in positions like, you know, you don't want them to be in the veins or anything like that, you don't want to be in unrealistic situations, um, but you can uh, you can, uh, you know, you can generate these, you can test them. And uh, you also can test, you know, you test this beforehand by showing these to medical experts. And, you know, so you give them a forced choice question, you give them a tumor, which has, a, you know, a, a, a liver with a real tumor in it, or a, you know, a, a liver which has one of the synthetic tumors in it and ask them, can you tell, um, you know, can you tell which one is which? And I guess we've asked that, uh, you know, in this case, I think there were tests done on two radiologists. One was pretty experienced and I think he was sort of about correct 70% of the time. And I think one of the other ones was actually, uh, actually negative. He tended to think the synthetic were more real than the real. This doesn't mean that these tumors are really real. You know, I don't want to overclaim here on this. I just want to say that these tumors are ones that, uh, you know, seem to be able to, you know, you know, they're not obvious tumors for the, uh, that the radiologist would say, obviously that's a fake. Right. And then the result here, and this is the CVPR 2023 paper, um, AI predictions trained on the real tumors. Uh, the same types of algorithms as before uh, semantic segmentation um, perform, you know, pretty well uh, with, uh, you know, almost identical with a synthetic. Uh, you can, I guess, make them a little bit better. You could use a few real tumors that you get on a small data set. You could add these in as well, uh, and that will improve performance more. Here is the, you know, maybe this is a bit too detailed for this talk, is the import vessel segmentation. As I said, you don't want to put the tumors in the vessels. Um, 
Uh, so you need to do something to try and find regions of the liver where you can put these down, location proposals, collision detection, etc. You can experiment with certain types of texture. Uh, you can sort of make shapes, which could be ellipses, generated ellipses, the formal ellipses. You blur the blur the things and you put them in. So it's not sort of a sophisticated GANS type training. But in fact, there are maybe reasons for that, but training with GANs or training with the fusion model, you know, you need data to train it on. Um, and here, you're not really needing much data to do any of the training. Um, and this could benefit, you know, this because with a synthetic, you can make the tumors of all the sizes you want. And particularly, you could make small tumors, which would be, uh, you know, the ones you particularly care about in detecting. And so there are, we did get some results that if you trained on the synthetic tumors and made them smaller, you're actually picking up more of the real uh, small tumors. Okay. Now, that was the little paper. Now, that was liver. So then we thought, okay, well, we've been working on pancreas. Let's try it on pancreas. So a similar story is happening. This was submitted, uh, you know, so it's in review now. Um, and similar procedure, you want to make synthetic uh, pancreatic tumors uh, by varying shape. Extra, you get men doctors to look at it to see if they could tell the distinction, you could get feedback, etc. And the results are not fully as high as what you had with the Felix data, where you had a lot of things to train, but it's actually quite, you know, but it's actually, in a way, really surprisingly good, I think, you know. You're, you're getting high sensitivity, you're getting 0.28 false positives, and I think this is a starting point. You can do better with generating even more tumors. Um, so that was, I guess, using generative, but generative in the sense of making data <laughs> rather than for the analysis of it. Um, you could also, though we have Evaluating robustness of these synthetic tumors, how well they can be distinguished from real tumors, and you might also imagine situations where you evaluate algorithms on synthetic tumors, except, you know, you'd have to be really sure that those synthetic tumors were accurate. Okay, so that's the first part. Uh, the second bit that I would mention is uh, a form of generative although in a way it's really like doing a classic problem of in-painting, but doing it in generative models. So, you know, the in-painting problem